Hello, and welcome back to Chris's Ticks. For today, we're going to talk about tips on how to work on your Timex Electric Electronic Q Quartz or Dynabeat Timex watches. I'm going to just go over some quick tips that I wish I had known before working on these things, as well as some of the uh, questions that I get on the comments revolving Timex and Timex related watches. So hopefully this will be helpful to some people who plan to open these things up and let's get started. Tip of the first, crown and stem removal and replacement. How to remove the crown. This is actually very easy, but if you didn't read the manual or are looking for a screw or button like in a conventional watch, you're out of luck. You actually need tweezers. Here's the manual's instructions. Basically, you insert the tweezers, and this will spread the retaining clip. Once this is done, the clip will be out of the way, and you can pull the stem out entirely. If the stem is getting stuck, you may need to apply a little more pressure to the retaining clip, ensuring that there is enough space for the stem to move out of the way. Crown and stem insertion. To reinsert the crown and stem, just jam it back in and give it a little twist while pressing in on it. You don't really need the tweezers to spread the clips apart. They should push the clip out of the way and that should be it. Tip the second. Movement removal is through the crystal. Why do we care about the shunt bridge anyways? Well, typically it's because I find that on these electric and Dynabeat Timex watches that typically the hairspring is perfectly okay and it is not deformed. However, there's usually a break somewhere in the coil on the balance, meaning that in order to get to replacing it, you gotta remove the shunt bridge at a minimum to replace the balance. And this is also where sometimes when people ask me questions on how to proceed with the Timex repair, I noticed that they fail to do this step and what is normally a fairly easy balance replacement now becomes something a little harder than what was expected. There's also another reason why I'm showing you to remove the shunt bridge and that's because the way that it's installed, if you don't remove it properly and you end up pushing the shunt bridge back into the movement, you can very easily damage the contactor on the Timex by deforming it. And if you do that, you have other problems that require a disassembling the watch even further, which uh, I know is just not ideal. So let's try to avoid that. To remove the bridge, unscrew the screw holding the bridge in, and then carefully push the bridge to the left side of the movement. And then when it's out of the little tab that holds it in, use a screwdriver and from the uh, side that is towards the uh, battery terminal, push the shunt bridge towards you while using a set of tweezers to lift up or use your tweezers to uh, push towards you and tip the third, the shunt bridge. Why do we care about the shunt bridge anyways? Well, typically it's because I find that on these electric and Dynabeat Timex watches that typically the hairspring is perfectly okay and it is not deformed. However, there's usually a break somewhere in the coil on the balance, meaning that in order to get to replacing it, you gotta remove the shunt bridge at a minimum to replace the balance. And this is also where sometimes when people ask me questions on how to proceed with the Timex repair, I notice that they fail to do this step and what is normally a fairly easy balance replacement now becomes something a little harder than what was expected. There's also another reason why I'm showing you to remove the shunt bridge, and that's because the way that it's installed, if you don't remove it properly and you end up pushing the shunt bridge back into the movement, you can very easily damage the contactor on the Timex by deforming it. And if you do that, you have other problems that require uh, disassembling the watch even further, which uh, I know is just not ideal. So let's try to avoid that. To remove the bridge, Unscrew the screw holding the bridge in, and then carefully push the bridge to the left side of the movement. And then 
when it's out of the little tab that holds it in, use a screwdriver and from the uh, side that is towards the uh, battery terminal, push the shunt bridge towards you while using a set of tweezers to lift up. Or use the tweezers to uh, push towards you and use the screwdriver to lift it up. Either way, it doesn't matter. What you want to avoid is having the shunt bridge move into or towards the con battery terminal. Because if that happens, like I said, you have a pretty good risk of ramming that thing right into the contactor and forming it. And hooray, now you have a worse problem. So just do that again, get the bridge unscrewed, lift it up, move the bridge in a bit, and then using another tool, try to lift the bridge upward while pushing it towards you. Once it's out, awesome. Then you can simply replace the screw that the shunt bridge was on because you'll need to remove the two other screws and if you don't put the shunt bridge screw back in then the rest of the movement will just come apart and this is where uh, lots of problems can happen because if you just need to replace the balance uh, and you weren't expecting to reinstall a bridge that had a bunch of pivots on it well this might suck because it has pivots and it has uh, additional contactors which are a bit springy so things can kind of get a little uh, messy here. So try to avoid that and reinstall that shunt bridge screw, even without the bridge installed. Here is the video zoomed in. Uh, the tweezers there are trying to point at where the contactor is. I know it's hard to see due to the fact that it is fairly thin, but hopefully you can see the shadow that it was pointing at. Ah, isn't that funny? I realized that on recording this, I totally forgot to reinstall the uh, shunt bridge screw. So I went back and here it is. Again, please make sure to put that screw back in if all you really need to do is remove and replace the uh, balance. Uh, yeah, save yourself the trouble and uh, yeah, good luck. Tip the fourth, replacing the balance. Removing the balance. It's actually not super difficult, but we're going to spend a lot of time covering a bunch of stuff related to this. So I'm going to lump it all as one big tip. Now that the uh, shunt bridge is removed and the screw for it has been replaced, all you got to do is unscrew the two screws holding the balance back in. However, you do need to keep in mind the length of each of those screws and their location. This will matter on some Timexes as Getting the positions of these switched up might interfere with the day-date mechanism, and it'll do that primarily by pressing the screws against the actual day or date disks. So you again, you'll want to just make a note of which screws belong where, uh, and then uh, when it comes time to reinstall, replace them accordingly. With the two screws removed, you can uh, use your tweezers to grab the plate and pull up. This should free the balance, however the uh, magnet might pull it down, so just use a screwdriver or a second set of tweezers to uh, pull the actual balance clear. Oh, one more pro tip. The battery terminal on the left of the screen is held in by pressure of the balance bridge being screwed in, so make note of that and uh, don't lose it. When you get your new balance ready, I find the best way to install it is to drop it in from the uh, battery terminal down towards the uh, pivot and that should generally have a drop into place. Uh, if you go in from the magnet side and then move it up, chances are the balance might attract towards the magnet and you'll have to free it. This next part, I didn't show it, but once you have the balance bridge pressed back into place, give the balance a quick and just see that it's spinning okay. Next, I uh, reinstall the screws and I don't tighten it fully and I'll get to why in a second. While recording the uh, voiceover, I realized that I'm taking a really long time to uh, put the screws in, so I'm uh, kind of editing and speeding up the clips uh, as appropriate. Otherwise, we're going to be here for three minutes watching me fiddle around with the screws. So, now that the balance is screwed back in lightly, you'll want to just give it a quick flick and make sure it's moving okay. You'll notice that there's a lot of wobble in the balance. That's pretty normal. Uh, it is different from a traditional watch where when you insert the balance and screw it in, you expect it to be basically wobble free unless, you know, there's a problem. So the next thing is we are going to tighten the screws a bit and reduce or eliminate that wobble. I'll uh, grab a picture from the Timex service manual, but Timex actually refers to one of the screws as the balance end shake adjusting screw. Uh, that being said, uh, I realized that I can 
kind of tighten the other screw as well and it'll also re- reduce the shake it'll also kind of even the pressure out on the uh, balance quick word of caution don't put pressure on the bridge other than where the screw is if you put pressure where the uh, where the pivot is it is entirely possible that you damaged the pivot or shattered the jewel i have done this by accident it was a uh, it was an interesting crunchy noise that it made. Also kind of ruined my day. So pro tip, don't do that. Additionally, if you notice that the balance is still wobbly after a significant amount of uh, tightening, uh, check the jewels and pivots. More often than not, the pivot is likely worn out and you might just have to find another balance. Uh, no amount of uh, tightening will fix that wobble. The pivot looks like it's just kind of messed up. In the worst case scenario, uh, have a look at the actual uh, pivot hole itself. Uh, If it's shattered, then that's a bad sign. Uh, On whatever side that it's shattered on, you're going to need to replace that. And if it comes down to it, it's generally not worth trying to address the shattered shattered jewel on the main plate. Just grab a spare movement from another watch if you can. All right, if you've installed your new part and it's still not working, we're going to go over a couple reasons why that may be. Uh, The first thing that I'm going to talk about is the balance itself. Make sure that the contact pin on the balance side is corrosion free and have a quick look and make sure that the enamel wiring on the coil is okay. The next thing we'll want to do is rule out that the contactor is damaged. You can do this by doing a continuity test. You you can basically test between the battery terminal and the contactor itself. Be very careful not to deform the contactor. I pulled the contactor out of the watch to show you just generally where you want to probe. Again, be really careful. If you deform it, it is pretty robust and you can probably bend it back, but let's try not to get there. Anyways, moving on, uh, I'm going to grab my multimeter and I'll demonstrate that in uh, the next clip coming up. So if you do bend the contactor, I'm going to show you where the contactor should go. You can see where my screwdriver is pointing. There's a little line there that indicates the position of the contactor and where it's supposed to line up to. Uh, Use that. Try to correct it to that spot. So that means you will have to do it without the balance on. Uh, But yeah, it's not too bad. But yeah, hopefully you don't have to do that at all. Try not to damage that contactor. Good luck. Tip the final. Parts that don't interchange. A bit of background. I noticed that in a few watches that I got recently, repairs were attempted, and whoever did them did not differentiate between Timex Electric and Timex Dynabeat parts. It actually happened twice in the past 30 days as of this recording, which is in the middle of June. It's a bit odd, in one specific watch, a Dynabeat balance was put into an electric, and in another, almost all the electric components had been swapped with Dynabeat parts, except the balance. Normally, you'd think, that shouldn't work. The bridges and pivot holes should be different so that this kind of thing doesn't happen. However, the thing is, on a Timex Electric and Timex Dynabeat, there are bridges and pivot hole locations across the entire line of movements are exactly the same between the Electric, the Dynabeat, the Q Quartz, and the Electronic. So if you plop in a balance or pallet fork from one of the movements to another, they'll fit. And sometimes they'll run properly, but other times they won't. Generally, the thing you need to make sure is that you don't confuse Dynaby parts with electric or electronic parts. The electric and electronic are basically the same with the exception of a diode on the contactor to reduce sparking. So everything else kind of can be interchanged. Uh, but the Dynabeat actually have different parts because they beat at a different beat rate. The Electric is a 21600 and the Dynabeat is 28800, so a significant difference. You'll notice that if you look at the Dynabeat parts that uh, they'll look finer, that the teeth are smaller, and that's true, because they are. Uh, So I'm not really going to demonstrate that, so just double check the parts that you're using on your repairs before you fit them. That being said, uh, it seems that the most frequent change that appears to happen is that someone will swap in a electric or a Dynabeat balance where it should be the opposite one. So I'm going to show you the differences in those real quick. 
So looking at the two balances with the bridge on top, they look almost identical, right? So it's actually pretty hard with the parts in this orientation. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the two balances over, and that'll make it easier to tell which one belongs to which movement. On the left, we have our Timex electric balance. And on our right, we have a Timex Dynabeat balance. Can you spot the difference? On the left, with the Timex electric balance, you can see that the balance naturally kind of forms a uh, kind of like an upside down Y shape that kind of points straight up with the uh, balance resting relative to the bridge if you use that to act as like a guiding line. And on the right, you have your Dynabeat. It kind of looks like a uh, it's slanted a little bit onto the right side. And that, that's the main difference that you're going to see. Unless, of course, you count the windings in the coils. Uh, otherwise, that's what you're looking for. Additionally, if we uh, go back to the other picture, on the Q quartz model, sometimes the balance actually doesn't have that ring around it, uh, as you saw in the previous picture. I'll put, put that back up right now so you can have another look. Uh, but that being said, the regular Timex Electric balance will fit in a Q quartz, and the Q quartz one should fit in the electric one. So FYI, if you ever need to scrounge up some spare parts. Uh, but yeah, if you place the Dynamite one in an electric one, it will beat at the uh, 28,800 beats per hour. And if you put the electric in the Dynamite one, it'll consequently beat at the 21,600, appearing to run very slow. Sweet googly moogly. That was a long video. Anyways, that was the five big things that I could think of. If you got any tips or tricks for these, feel free to share those below in the comments. And, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time. Bye!